Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Brian. Welcome back to the channel and we have a review. I think I know why you're here. It's the title of this video. We're going to look at the Willet Blackened Collaboration Madeira Finished Rye. Now this is coming in um, non-age dated, but we're told that the average is around six and a half years old, upwards of eight years old of Willet's low rye and high rye mash bills blended together. And then it spends 14 weeks in this finishing. This comes in at 109.6 proof, and we are gonna dig right into it. And then what I wanna do is I wanna compare it to one of the Willet uh, single barrels that I have. And then because of its finishing, I thought maybe we do a quick check to see what this tastes like iced and what this might taste like compared to a Manhattan. Figured why not, let's go ahead. The nose on this is both like familiar to Willet Rye and a little bit different to Willet Rye I'm from where I'm used to. There, there's a lot of fruitiness to it, but when I've had Willet Ryes before, they're usually uh, kind of jumping out. Uh, and that's a lot of times because the proof is a little bit higher. And it usually jumps out with some spice. Uh, it might jump out with um, some herbal or grassy tones. You don't get that with this. You get some red fruit, some, some darker fruits, you get this um, this slight earthy barrel char type note in there as well. Some brown sugar. There's like a cinnamon, um, a cinnamon and nutmeg and clove mixture to it. That's really nice, and it's it's subtle, so it doesn't come off like the hot cinnamon. It's like really low, um, really deep in in the nose that adds a little bit of depth to the nose. It comes off sweet, but it doesn't come off bubblegummy like some of the um, Willet products can. It's like a, a, a touch of licorice, but but it's really inviting. There's um so there's like an herbal quality that mixes in with the spices I just mentioned, and overall it's pretty subdued. It's pretty rounded, and there's nothing that comes off overly um, uh, heavy and, and inviting like in a in a in a desserty or sultry sort of way. It just presents all these notes, um, some unique ones too from Will It Rise that I've had before. And uh, I'm just ready to dig in. Let's go ahead. Wow. There's like a deep golden raisin meets um, honey meets graham cracker, but not in a youthful graham cracker way, just in a sweet, um, brown sugary, dark fruit way. It sits, man, there's like a strand of, of citrus that's right in the middle and it, it doesn't jump out too, too far. It's not too out of place. It's very balanced. It starts to, to layer on the tongue with again, that little bit of smoke that you notice on the nose, a touch of oak, it lingers like uh, almost like grape juice. There's like a really nice sweet, grapey sweetness that continues. It's like a medium dryness on the finish. There's nothing about it that's overly loud. There's nothing about it that's overly syrupy. It is just a really um, unison pour and with a lot of flavors going on. There's a little bit of florality to it. It's like this candied floral thing. And that's like a really elegant note that I've noticed can get a little bit unruly in some of the single barrels where it can get very kind of grassy, herbally floral. It's a note that I like, but in here, I really like it. Let's quickly jump over to the um, single barrel. It's just a four year single barrel that I've that I've had immediately on the nose. It has some some vanilla, but it's not very deep or um, or or wide or, or like three dimensional vanilla. It just has some vanilla, has some spice, some spearmint. Kind of has some some candy caramel notes a little bit, but but not nothing too crazy. Let's go ahead. It, it reminds me of a rye. Let's go ahead and jump in the palate. A little richer, a little bit more luscious, with some nougat and a little bit more of the graham cracker, some chocolate, and then typical rye spices. So it does have some more spearmint, kind of kind of lead the pack and 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 come out a little bit more piercing. This is. Just a really nice, subtly bready, but um, 
light fruits, nice vanilla, caramelized rice spice pour that reminds me of Willet rice that I've had. Go back to the black end really quick. Golly, it, it um, is a lot more syrupy on the palate coming from the other rye with more depth, with a lot of dark fruits, a lot of like strawberry notes, some cherry juice notes, and a nice candied citrus, some a little bit of brown sugar and salted caramel, but they're they're not, nothing's overpowering one or the other. It just has some nice decadent flavors subdued, some fruit notes subdued, um, really complex without having um, a ton of weight to the mouthfeel, coming in at a really approachable proof that lingers kind of vermouthy. It's from me hearing some people say, oh, it kind of tastes like a Manhattan, that I figured, why not ice this down, see what it does, and then try it as a Manhattan. Or, excuse me, try the Willet single barrel that I tried as a Manhattan, just to kind of compare these two. This pour, cooled down, iced down, has a lot more of a lazy palette. There's caramel and brown sugar and some vanillas that kind of roll on the tongue a little bit more. You get that vermouthy quality, jump out a little bit more. So there's kind of brandy cherries, fig, strawberry, plum notes, and that's really good. That's really good iced down. That's very easy to sip and, and, and it seems to pull out a little bit more body. Let's switch over to a Manhattan made with the same single barrel that we compared the black into. It has already some exaggerated notes on the nose coming from the sweet vermouth. On the palate, you have over-exaggerated vermouth notes, but the syrupiness is pretty similar. You lose the whiskey character a little bit to the vermouth. And so this is one that might have to do with a little bit more whiskey in it to balance it out. But that's not exactly the point here. Let's go back to the ice down uh, blackened. The ice down blackened is like a perfectly sweetened and layered Manhattan. A lot of similar flavors without the exorbitant intensity that might come from sweet vermouth or expressed orange or a cherry to complement it. But I would say if you have that iced and expressed some orange or put a garnish of cherry on there, that can be served over a cube and it would serve as your cocktail for the night. The more the blackened sits open, the more caramel seem to grow on the nose. This is one that I would say, if you have not explored Willet Family Estate rise, be it the single barrel or the small batch at all, I would probably hold off and I would tell you to pause and try and look for the four year small batch rye first to see if that is a profile that you enjoy. If you do not like Willet small batch rye, there's a good chance you don't really like blackened. Now, while there's a lot more balance to it, I think that there are a lot of flavors that are inherent to the Willet rye that I personally like that will be noticeable in this rye. If you don't like finished ryes or finished whiskeys, I still think this might be something that you're interested in. If you did not tell me that this was finished, I think that some of those fruit notes and some of the smoothness of it would probably come off like a really well-balanced pour. And so I don't think that it has an overabundance of uh, finishing like you might notice in, in some of the BBC products or in Midwinter's Night's Dram. Some of those things that seem to have a lot of heavy finishing to it, that's not what you're gonna find here in the black end. This is gonna be very well balanced, very well placed. When it comes to the price point, so this seems like it lines up with, let's say some Bell Mead products. This lines up with what you would pay for anywhere from a six year on up Willet single barrel. And while this is a small batch, um, that needs to be stated that it does fall within a price range you might expect from a product like that. I personally enjoy this more than the small batch. I enjoy this more than a lot of the single barrels that I've had. While you won't get the oomph, the kick, maybe some of the depth and complexity that you get out of a higher proof um, single barrel that might have some more oak to it or some more um, flavors to pull apart. One thing that I know about Willet Family Estate products, the small batch included with the single barrels, is that you have some variance 
not necessarily knowing if it's high rye, not necessarily knowing if it's low rye, sometimes getting some things that are really grassy, which I like, some things that you get that are really candied sweet. There's a whole gamut of flavors that you can get in that. And I think one thing that is true about the blackened is that you would know every time you got a bottle of this, you're going to get the same flavor. If you think you like the way that that sounds, I think you might enjoy this bottle. Thanks everybody for checking out this video. If you want more content, please subscribe to the Entry Proof Podcast or catch me at Drew P. Whiskey's YouTube channel on Thursday nights where we do Entry Proof Live and we chit chat about things, do blind tastings, talk about the barrel picks that we do. If you want to support what Drew and I are doing on our individual channels and together, you can do so at patreon.com slash entry proof podcast. Everybody, thanks so much for tuning into this video. We'll see you all later.